What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kiki Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at the North and South Node of the Moons and why that's important when aspecting personal planets within your chart. So, let's get into it. Now, if you don't know, I'll preface to say that this is an introduction video for a presentation that I will be doing on this topic. Um, as well as a series that I'm going to do over time. So check the video that I made, Astro Essentials, on this topic. And, you know, reach out to me if you want to be a part of the webinar. Uh, but more than likely, I, I will have the, the replays uh, available too. So getting into it, the North and South Node of the Moons. Uh, in the technical sense, what, what they are, uh, it's when it rep is represented when the the path of the sun and the moon intersect and creates a point in the in the northern hemisphere as as well as the southern hemisphere hemisphere and how that translate into an individual uh, and even in the collective is that it it on a collective level the north and south node really deals with moving society forward along with like the outer planets so um when you follow the transits of the north and south node in the world you will see those themes start to take form for example while the north node was in cancer we really saw the ascension of of women's roles within society or kind of like the the return of, of more of a, a matriarchal uh, ideology and things like that. Lots, lots of movement. And then uh, when you look a little bit deeper, the people who had personal planets in Cancer, Capricorn at the time, were, i.e. like a Cardi B, were really thrusted towards destiny. So that's what we're really going to explore within the presentation. So now on a more personal, in the natal chart, the North and South node is giving you karmic insight into your, your past, where you've been and where you're going. So the North node also known as Rahu is representing where you're going. And what I like to do is I like to take the, the North node, your rising sign and your sun and really give you a, a, a nice general sense of, of the soul's uh, purpose. So North node is like, okay, Wherever the North Node is, this is what I need to work at cultivating. So I need to develop more of the expression of this sign. And wherever uh, house this is in, I'm destined to uh, partake in manifestations coming from that area. Okay. Now, and then the South Node is going to correspond to the past. Things like I, I like to consider it like a soul memory, right? Along with other aspects like 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 a soul memory so in the evaluation of uh the south node i like to look at uranus i like to look at neptune and of course the moon and the 12 so many other things right so the south node is like a, a natural inclination and it's very interesting when you look at the charts of people with strong south node connections and aspects to other planets it's almost like the person is finishing up something that they started in previous lives or like if it's a harsher aspect is going to result in knowing the thing but really needing to overcome and perfect you know that particular thing so now what i've been doing is just really paying attention towards what happened because we all have a north and south node but they may not always be in direct aspect towards a planet so what i've done is to really go through and look at a gamut of different people in the positions of their north and south nodes and whenever there's a significant aspect to a personal planet in a particular house how is that manifested? So the first thing that I want you to know about this is that when the North Node is coming into aspect with 
a personal planet in the sense of, let's say, the conjunction, this can signify that that when it comes to that planet, that the person has a lot of development to undergo with this. So the focus should be on merging. The purpose is really the, the I want to say merging, but it's the actual development because we know conjunctions are the two energies together. But the, the key thing you want to know about the North Node or Rahu is that it adapts wherever it goes. It's almost like a uh, impersonator. Um, so if it's in Sagittarius, it's really like, okay, Jupiter, what, what's going on? I'm following you. So it's very influ it gets very easily influenced. It's a, a, a sensitive energy. So when it's coming into conjunction, which is the most powerful aspect, you have a complete submersion into that energy, a real focus. Now, the key thing, and this is what we'll explore more, is understanding the nature of the North Node in, in or Rahu. And the funny thing, and this takes time. It takes time. And uh, I can say when I first got into astrology, I was putting personalities to the planets. but And, and a lot of that was based on the natural mythologies and understandings of them um, that were available. But there really wasn't much on the nodes, although the the myth, the myth story says a lot, okay? And you know, we're, we're, we will go over that. Um, and, and if you know, you're curious, look it up, the, the, the mythology of Rahu and K2, okay? So I was striving to put personalities to them. Okay, and of course, it started with my own. I started with my own Rahu and just saying, like, okay, how does this energy operate in, in you know, comparison towards other points in my chart? And, and what you'll find here with with Rahu is that it's it's a reckless energy. If I had to compare it to another type of, of energy in the personal planet i would i would say mars because it wants to do it, it's it's concerned with like what is my assignment or what what needs to be done so whatever that north node is is like okay i need to learn this place and i'm gonna explore it but it's the reason i liken it to a mars or i, I say like with an airy spirit is because it's it it wants it rapidly it it's it's just trying it isn't really thinking right so um that's why you we make mistakes in life you know what i'm saying you're not gonna understand your purpose or anything on the first go around is a series of trial and error and that's like partly represented through rahu and its nature like it, it, this is the part of ourselves that that leaps before looking right and it's funny in the in the myth it's the head so it it can see but it's never satisfied. So ch check out the myth and all of that. Um, and then, so North Node, Rahu, I feel like it's, it's a very eager, opportunist um, uh, energy that is, could, will do anything to achieve the purpose. So like Mars, kind of cutthroat in the soldier, like the job needs to be done, okay? Um, but like I said, you'll want to start with gaining an understanding of your Rahu, like what what sign is this in, and then so okay, so you want to you want to do that. Now, it's the same for the South Node, but let me give you a little insight into like the nature of the South Node. So in the myth, the South Node is the the body without the head. So to some extent, it is lost. It's kind of just just going right. Um, which is also, you know, representative on a Neptunian level, right? Of uh, of that fog of spirit and just just being and, and and trying to make make sense of everything, right? So formless. You want to think about that. Well, I also want to think about 
with with the South Node, you want to think about pure intuition. Um, it's almost like, and this is I'm, I'm speaking of like a manifestation of it, right? I want to like compare it to like the Men in Black three movie when they had this like this species that he could see the realities of so many things happening at once. I, I liken K2 to it, it in the sense that it's aware, but it, it may not, it's not able to necessarily filter, filter, and that's like the blindness to it. So it can, it can be, it can manifest or, or feel as though in the South Node, you're you're walking in the dark you know what i'm saying and trying to find the trying to find the light or whatever and you it's you're feeling your way through and it's like a kind of right but you can't fully see now to kind of put it together right or bring balance to that we can extract here that in order to cut the light on we got to march towards the purpose and we'll we'll find that head and all of that okay and how you do that will be pertaining to the houses and signs. But, anywho, real. So, when it comes to a conjunction of the North Node or Rahu, you're, we can more than likely assess that this planet, there's a strong emphasis that this planet needs to be developed in, in this life, and then it'll more than likely manifest in this eagerness within the person where so if it's venus they're going to be a, a a a super romantic right but i will also say no two charts are the same so at in the same regard you may have someone who's this north node in venus um conjunct shows that like it wasn't developed because the karma is of not taking action in this life so there could be a karmic pattern of still refraining from that so nonetheless it's like when you see those when you see it conjunct north node you know like okay this is an important planet this is an underdeveloped planet from previous lives okay so then we got then we we, we go to the conjunction of the south node so when a planet is conjunct the south node it's you'll really want to see where this is occurring so what house and then in addition to that are the are the that the trines are there trines or squares attached to this now what this conjunction and those aspects from there give insight as to how the person express this um south node energy energy conjunct the south node in the past so in this regard, it can be an asset towards them, right? Where in the sense of you sold something really good. So if you were like a really good parent in, in the past life, you will have a really good parent in this life. However, the whole thing of the South Node is about it's remaining stagnant. So ever per going back to my idea of saying like it's like not being able to find your way. After a while, when a person's like, yo, I've been trying to like get out of here and I can't, I'm just gonna sit here where I'm comfortable. So the thing about the South Node is it, it represents extreme comfortableness. And within the chart, certain eases can hold you back from that North Node, right? But nonetheless, it's important in the sense that it can also be an asset. So in the same vein, let's say this is a South Node conjunct Venus, and this happens to end up in the fifth house. This is someone who's more than likely was, uh, is coming in with some real strong talent from a past life, okay? Um, and either they need a little less ego, or a little bit more, right? Um, but what I'm gonna do, what we'll, we'll discuss further is how to it, use the rest of the chart to give more emphasis towards those particular um, alignments, okay? So then the next part is about like looking at like the, the, the other aspects, the, the trines or, or the squares. So in the sense of squares to the North Node, 
Squares to the, and this is why I said people always you 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 have to understand how squares work because if you're just relating it to the sense of like I have a planet that squares and that means that like I'm not good at this. No, squares are at points of growth. So it's like okay, you need to learn this in this life, but in order for you to learn this, you're gonna need some tension. So when you think of squares, think of pressure makes diamonds, right? So when you have squares to the north node, that means it's not necessary. It's not gonna come easy, right? Or what propels you towards your destiny can be something that comes out of not a necessarily like 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 a perceived tragedy. So let's say we got north node um, in the eighth house uh, opposing. Jupiter in the second and let's say squaring off to um, like a, 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 a Venus in somewhere in the fifth or eleventh, right? This can this can signify inheritance coming through death, right? So those harsh aspects, so the North Node square to Venus, I lost this person. This relationship was near and dear to me, right? But opposite to that, oh shit, it brought balance to my situation here. Uh, so we're going to explore all these little different variations. And then for the, the more harmonious aspects, like I said, this can represent just advantages towards reaching your destiny. And a quick one, uh, let's go with North Node in the second sextile uh, moon in the fourth. Okay, this can be and let's put them in really let's let's put them in like like a tourist to a cancer. This can represent someone having um good security within the home life or the emotional security needed right that doesn't mean that the rest of your chart is all you know peaches and herb but for what in this in this regard and in, in regards towards whatever emotional development you're meant to obtain or emotional you know values or restructuring of that that energy supports you uh within it okay uh but then it's always going to come to a point of you having to move. You like move, not just accept the energy, but move uh, uh, towards it. Then south uh, sextiles and, you know, trines to like the south node. Like I said, these can really represent gifts like um, or people also assets. So um, like a powerful, let's say you have like a, the south node in your 11th house trying uh, a Pluto in the third shit this could be representative of having like a, a famous grandfather I've seen stuff like this play out you know what I'm saying and and, and your, your your grandfather helps like his legacy empowers your 11th house endeavors it's all karma you know what I'm saying but this is just a little insight on keys things you need to know um about planets aspecting i'm gonna go into more um during during the presentation like i said over time i'll do videos you know i'll do videos on particular uh, placements so i hope you guys enjoy if you haven't subscribed to my channel feel free to do so now if you want to join the class if you want to book a reading send me an email we'll set something up till next time peace